your pencil and paper. Take some notes now. Just prior to the last election, between January and April 2003, your representative attended 8 out of 12 sittings of Parliament and spoke not once. After elections in May, Parliament resumed in June, and he attended less than half of the sittings. He spoke once. And do you know that during that speech, he did not even thank the people of St. Andrew for returning him to the House of Assembly? What he did say is that nobody could put stumbling blocks in my way and I will be around to represent the people for a very long time. But he did not thank those people. He reminds me of the African saying, there's an African saying about a person who falls in love with the gift but forgets the giver. He is obsessed with sitting in parliament and pulling that salary and the attendant benefits which come with being in parliament. But he is not obsessed with fighting and representing the people who put him there. In 2004, he spoke once, one single time out of 35 sittings. Of course, he only went to parliament 14 times, less than half the period. And you know what he spoke on? Sahara St. John's obituary. In 2005, there were 36 meetings. The MP for St. Andrew spoke once. He went to 23 of the 36. And on that occasion, he spoke on the coroner's act. We got any undertakers in St. Andrew? was led by Dale Marshall, his tag team partner, so I assume he felt compelled to speak that evening. Out of 34 meetings last year, the MP for St. Andrew said not one word, not one. He went to Parliament often enough to see that the seat was not declared vacant. 20 times out of 34, but he did not pick his teeth. This year, this year, he was absent for 14 sessions out of the 27, and he spoke once, after being silent for a full parliamentary year, he spoke once, and people blaming me for that, blaming me or crediting me, depending on how you look at it, for that. I think this MP has drawn enough easy money though. When you go to work, you have to produce, don't you? And if you do not produce, you are fired. Why would you continue then to employ someone who is shortchanging you? You pay his salary. You deserve better. He is your servant and he failed to serve you. He cannot keep retaining a seat on a legacy. As a representative, he has to retain a seat by serving the people who put him there. Now, I see the constituency of St. Andrew being propelled to the forefront of eco-tourism in this country. I feel very strongly about it. And anyone with an intimate knowledge of the constituency of St. Andrew will be well aware of the breathtaking nature trails that we have, natural nature trails in Turnersaw Woods, right through to St. Simons. Then we have the springs up to the back in Borden. And there is no reason why our unique beauty and topography <laughs> Thank you. cannot be combined with our food producing potential to provide the type of developmental benefit that, that can accrue to revenue for the people of St. Andrew. I recently 
review the draft ecotourism proposal and I am extremely excited about it. There's soil in Orange Hill, certain parts of Orange Hill. That is a horticulturalist dream. The prospects of specialized horticultural and food crop farming in that soil are endless. Our people are not reaping enough benefits from a resurgence in agriculture, which that can accrue. I remember days when many families in St. Andrew were fed by agriculture. You had ground and you raised stocks. I want to see a resurgence of that because I am telling you, St. Andrew, so from now you will have to feed yourself. I don't know if you heard John Daniel this week saying that the cost of vegetables in the supermarket far surpassed what the farmers receive for their vegetables. You are going to soon have to buy your vegetables firsthand from the farmers. And the farmers in St. Andrew have to lead that initiative. And I'm sure with the help of some agriculturists in this party who are passionate about agriculture, Hensley Ben and James Paul, I know it has to happen. The land has to be found for each discipline so that the players have the latitude to train and develop in their own space. Likewise, some accommodation has to be made to develop the informal recreation space in Cambridge in Chalky Mount so that it can be used by the outstanding young sports persons up there. Some of them who are starting at primary school level and winning awards galore, but they have no proper facilities to practice. We are the people who have produced world-class cricketers and national netballers. The development of our sports persons in St. Andrew cannot be ignored. The pottery in Chalky Mount should be displayed in attractive kiosks in Bell Plain or along the East Coast where we have the tourists passing every day. Thousands pass every year. We have in this constituency internationally recognized artists. I don't know if you know that. Woodpecker, Ras Congo and Eilix and Irika who should be exhibiting their work in our resource center at least twice a year. And while on the topic of Irika, I need to uh, uh, um, digress because I had promised her I would do something. She's a member of my constituency and let me say first of all, she is very clear that she did not want to be used as a political football. She's Rastafari, genuine and outspoken. She lost a daughter, she buried that daughter last week. I went to view my summer's body last Wednesday evening and I will tell you water came to my eyes. That child was her right hand business person. She was her advisor and one of her creative directors. She died of ovarian cancer at age 20. And when I went to view the body, Erika pulled me one side and she said, Miss Sandy Fred, I want to find out what has happened to the Louis Lynch report. I said, how do you mean? She said, my daughter went to Louis Lynch in Sanford. And even though I don't know, I can't put it to the school. My daughter can ask me, mommy, mommy, is it school? You feel it's school? If you see, I reckon now she's a woman. That's true. That is true. And water came to my eyes because I know that the loss of a child has to be the most un <laughs> unfathomable grief. And when you have questions surrounding the death of a child, you have to ask questions. And tonight I am asking the government of Barbados to put Irika and the other parents who have had children with cancer and respiratory problems at ease and tell us what you found at Louis Lynch and tell us without delay.